Hi, I'm Jace, and this is Wine Chat, and we're here at The Stable in St. Louis to talk to what, what I think is your, St. Louis's first micro-distiller. Second. You're, you're the second? Yes. God, we got the wrong Square guy. one beat us by oh, one month. All right, cut. No, no I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, our first micro-distiller from St. Louis, either way, um, and, and certainly the one that's got the most product on the market at the moment, um, and, uh, and Jake Jones. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jason. And uh, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about some dis uh, distilling. We're going to talk about uh, 85 lashes rum, and we might talk about porn later. Um, so it's going to be a full conversation. <laughs> we're gonna talk about porn. We're going to talk about porn. This will be our highest viewed episode ever, after <laughs> the, after the Lady Hennessy episode, which I think is oh, still number one no, on that's YouTube. That's my number one too. Everybody's, especially Chris's. So anyway, uh, you're, you're a distiller. How did you get this gig? And, and I mean, just how do I do this? I want to I do this. I want to do what you do. How well, do I, I really do don't have a, a really good story other than my brother believed that I would be good at it and because uh, I was always good at math and science in, in high school. Uh, that never, rules me out right never there. never had any formal training um, or, or anything other than just one of the owners, Mike Stapleton, um, set this place up. He's one of the investors. And... He, he showed me everything he knew, and I kind of took the ball and ran with it and worked on the new, the new products that we have out today, the, the grappas and things like that. So your flagship is, uh, is 85 Lashes Rum Yes. at the moment. I mean, that's what you guys are really like trying to make that's a name That's what we want to focus yeah. on. Uh, focus. Um, why rum? Um, that's a good question. I, th I think a lot of it had to do with um, it was one of our better products at the time when the decision was made. But also because my brother, I think, thought it was a product that could be mixed with other uh, mixed drinks and could be used a lot behind the bar. And so I think that was one of the decisions, too. Now, I've talked to you about this before, though. You don't mix it, do you? No. You I drink, drink it straight. drink it on the rocks, actually. So. Um, and, and it's pretty good that way. Um, but do you find a lot of people here at the stable are mixing it as a better way to get it to the customer? No, actually, they're um, drinking it more straighter on the rocks, drinking it more on the rocks here than anything. Um, and then, you know, I, I just have a lot of customers tell me all the time that they're, they're actually, um, you know, mixing with Coke or, you know, different things like that. But, but simple preparations, we're not, we're not getting crazy. Right, stuff. right. So, uh, what, what is the process you use? You walk us briefly um, in this still right here. This is the still you use. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what's the process to make 85 lashes rum? Simply uh, put, we, we ferment a cane, sugar, and molasses mixture um, in a 55-gallon barrel. Usually we'll do five or six of those. And once those are done fermenting, usually takes about a month. Uh, we'll pump the, the fermentation over into the pot. So I'll have to run about five or six of those barrels through this pot here to get another 12 to 14 carboys of 135 proof rum. Then what I'll do is I'll take all that rum and put it back through again um, and then redistill it. When I do the second distillation, that takes, a, takes even more heads off, uh, which are, heads are considered the poisons and things like that. It also uh, makes it a little smoother. Um, and then it, when it's distilled the second time, it's at 160, 165 proof, which helps it age much faster. Um, the wood that we, we don't actually use barrels here. We use stainless vessels. And then we take a, uh, a wood that's toasted our specifications. We actually use French oak. And what we'll do is we'll take that French oak and put it in the barrel. We have it down to how many sticks of wood versus how many gallons and, and the proof and everything. So we keep our, our uh, taste consistent. And then basically we use the spirals, the, the, the wood that's cut like a spiral, because it's going to um, age it much faster. It's going to get the flavor from the wood much faster because there's more surface area. And Mostly, mostly because we are so new, we're not even two years old yet, this June will be two years, that we, want, we didn't want to wait two, three, four, five years to have a product go to market. So um, through having to do it because we had no other choice, we came up with a product that we're going to stick with. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So once, you've, once you're finished with this process, how many bottles of 85 lashes come out of one batch? Usually 350. Okay. No more than 400. I've never had 400 out of one batch. It just depends on the amount of alcohol in each fermentation. That's the bottom line. Now, how many batches are you on now? Uh, we're on batch 27. 
Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of rum come out of this place. Pretty much. And now is that all the stain in St. Louis, or is that? Uh... Uh, we're actually marketing mostly in the St. Louis area, but we we just uh, come Monday we're going to be in Illinois. Uh, we just did a deal with Wirtz Beverage. Um, from my understanding, they're, they're the largest uh, distributor over there, and so we've got a bunch of stores ready to take possession of it. So awesome! We're getting ready. With, we're going gangbusters on boxing, packaging, and bottling. Now so. you're you're in Illinois. Does this mean you start scooting up towards Chicago and oh, yeah, for world domination? It's going to be in Chicago. <laughs> uh, I'm already in, in talks with quite a few other distributors in other states right now. Fantastic. So so right here from St. Louis, we can expect a, a giant. Uh, spirits business to, to bloom. Yeah, we're trying to expand out within our area and just keep circling out and out and out. Yeah. So, so past eighty five lashes. What? Because uh, you make. Uh, I understand you've, you've got a gin here. Right. You've got a, a peach brandy. But what's? Uh, and you've got a grappa um, that you're making from local grapes. Is that is that correct? Yeah, we we uh, make our grappa from a Chamberson grape skin that we get from Charlottesville Vineyard in Saint Genevieve and. Since St. Genevieve's French and the, the Chamberson skins, a French-American hybrid skin, um, we pretty much, when we designed the label, we put uh, a lot of uh, fleur de lis on it and things to hearken to the French side of it, but then we named it Vita di St. Louis, which is life of St. Louis in, in Italy. Um, we actually just recently had Banfi try our grappa and they liked it. They were at, in town for some event. And then they took a bottle back to Italy and they're going to send us pictures back, so that, that's going to be interesting. Are people drinking your grappa in Italy? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So that's going to be cool. Uh, so what uh, beyond grappa? And we like the grappa, by the way. We've uh, you know the Pope's behind the camera, but but we like the can the, the grappa. Um, and I've just had a sample of your corn, right. your peach corn whiskey, right? Um, which I I give the thumbs up, but that's still tentative. What's what's the? What, can we expect that on the market soon? Yes, we've got a, a approval for it. We've just we're just working on uh, just the final aging of it. See how long we need to age it. Basically, what we did was we made a corn whiskey, and then we distilled uh, peaches through that. It doesn't have a real heavy peach taste. No. Just a, the smallest amount of essence came over from the peaches, and then because it's peach and corn whiskey, we're calling it porn. So. Yeah, and this ain't it's not that exciting. But. This this ain't tutti frutti stuff either, though. This is no. serious. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess it's it's not a whiskey and it's not a brandy, really. Right. Um, but it's but it's a very relatively dry spirit um, and tasty. But do you plan to do? Uh, are you going to cater to the masses? Do some liqueurs or some flavored spirits in the future? Uh, we're, we have a sambuca that we pretty much did test batches. Everyone loves it. Uh, that tries it. We haven't got our uh, formula approval yet on that. That's just a matter of me getting off my button and doing the paperwork. Um, but but pretty much yeah we're gonna do some we're gonna do absinthe um, we're gonna do an ouzo we're gonna basically stick to marketing 85 lashes as our main flagship as you call it uh, but then all these other spirits give people a chance when they come in here to see what what all other spirits we can do and have other things to try I just hate it when people come in to the distillery and they, we only have one product for them to try so we want to keep at least four available at all times so. Well, I, I'm excited to see the new stuff, um, but I'm enjoying the current stuff. Is there anything you'd rather be doing right now than what you're doing? No, I can't think of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Jake, I've got thank the best you. job in the world. <laughs> Thanks for coming so. out. We got, we got some, uh, w this is the 85 lashes right here. Yep. All right. All right. Let's, let's do some drinking. Till next time. Salute. Cheers.